Welcome back to Relationship Wednesday. This is Life in Style, and we are on the segment Talk to Pastor Chris. Well, you know, on this segment, we have a panel that discusses uh, various issues, some of them that are raised by you and some that we just think are helpful to you. I hope you got some uh, nuggets of wisdom uh, from the couple that we just spoke to earlier on. Well, I've got, I would say this is the best uh, panel that you could get, Matters Relationship. And it's a pleasure to have you on Life in Style. Um, You've been married for nearly as long as I've lived. <laughs> That's really something, you know. But today we would to talk about, um, is there a need for early marriage? In my opinion, I think uh, marriage is not about age. Marriage is about uh, meeting the right person who you have a, a deep connection with, which you can now like form uh, a lasting bond kind of situation. You can't get married when you're not mature enough. Because if you do, that just calls for problems. So I think the best time to get married is when you gather enough uh, maturity and you feel like this is the perfect time to go and get married. I don't think there's a right age, but I think there's a right time when you feel you're ready to get married. That's when you should actually do it. So at least you should have your own money when you're getting to marriage. Because sometimes you go into marriage, your, hus like your husband has money and you don't have money yourself. So you end up... Uh, borrowing money every time you, you want pampas, you go to your husband and you want this, this. Is there a need for early marriage? Do you want to go first? Um, well, a need for early marriage, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, because um, we, we try to keep the girls in school a little longer. Okay. And we know that early marriage is, is a threat to the quality of life. Okay. Um, that um, the girls would eventually have. Because when we talk about early marriage, I've seen girls get married from the age of 9 right. to the age of 18, which is really quite young. Okay. Uh, and so there's a, that, that's a threat. Right. But um, early marriage is a reality because once you fall in love, what next is there to do than to, to, to get married to, to the particular individual? Okay. I consider myself a child uh, bride because I was married at the age of 20. Right. And, and that, I would say, is a little young. Um, you, you, your marriage is more threatened when you do get married to below the age of 23. You're really a teenager. You have not wow. developed. All you are right. still at the stage of uh, identity crisis. Okay. So before you find yourself, you are now needing to be somebody's partner and to ensure your partner is comfortable and happy. Right. And so I, I wouldn't say there is a need for um, early, marriage. early marriage. I would say that early marriage is a threat uh, to the young woman, to the young man, and to the society at large. All right. Uh, Simon, I'll come to Marini because I know that she's gotten married early, but I'll come. <laughs> well, to some degree, I agree with, uh, with her. I think Ali is relative. Right. Uh, but interestingly, um, in African culture, women got married pretty young. Well, the men were a lot maturer. Uh, so in some ways, it had some disadvantage. My mother got married at 17. And... Um, uh, so, in that sense, I wouldn't say it's an advantage when you're too young, and I, I'm glad she said less than 20. I got married at 23, uh, at the end of 23, so I was just getting to 24, and we're age mates with my wife. How did you uh, even know what you want at 23, <laughs> 24? <laughs> well, f for some reason, I think you're mature enough at that point, because I, I just finished college. All right. I fell in love the first year of college, so I had to wait. Really, what I was waiting for is to finish college. <laughs> uh, and once I finished, there was nothing else to wait. Okay. And uh, for me, why that was important, uh, number one, it just... Um, uh, helped me not to get into unnecessary temptations of love. Uh, so it settled me down early enough. Uh, but secondly, we were able to grow together into what we wanted to become. She was, she was just starting out on a teaching career. I was just starting out on my law career. And we were able to settle down together. You know, just get into a house. It was basic. Buy things together. Uh, I feel we got very... Um, 
we got to know each other a lot earlier and right. we got concrete in this covenant uh, just because we started out early. Uh, I, have but I, I would so. ask you, you know, um, you say that it helps you mm -hmm. avoid certain temptations. Yeah. But there are those people who think that when you get married early, yeah. it's going to be a threat to your marriage in the sense that some people don't know what they want when they're 25, 24. So maybe by the time they get to 35, um, they begin to see other people. Uh, they feel like they've been in this long enough and they're just coming to self-awareness. Uh, so is it a guarantee that if you marry Ali, you're going to stay faithful to that person? It's not a guarantee, of course, because uh, faithfulness is a choice that people right. make. Okay. But uh, getting married later is neither a guarantee, <laughs> so it's choices. Okay. I think for me the advantage was we were able to start off together. Right. At that point I knew what I wanted to do. I, I was a lawyer. By the time you choose a career, you have an idea what you want to do in life. Okay. And she knew what she wanted to do in life. Right. So I remember how we got together. I was asking her, so what do you want to, be, to do eventually? She said, well, I want to work for a few years and eventually get into ministry. I said, well, I also want the same. I actually want this and then eventually get into to what I'm doing right now. And we just felt like it helped us grow up together. Okay. Uh, and there was a unity and a union that we developed uh, that I found some of those who get late later in life already set in their own ways, just find it harder to get to All a right. point of that unity and saying, let's work together. Okay. Uh, so I'm not saying it's a disadvantage to get married late, uh, but I'm just saying that the advantage I saw in getting married early All is right. that we get to develop together and agree on some things together and start off with getting children early enough for us to be able to do a lot more after children. All right. Maureen, you've gotten married early. Um, in this generation, does that happen a lot? Because I think, from where I sit, I think most people want to pursue their careers, get established before they do that. I would understand it in the, uh, in the days of Jenny. Uh, I'm not very sure about our day. Um, I think in our day, uh, the woman prefers to actually get married a bit later because there's, uh, you want to go to university, you want to get your own job, you want to be stable, and you want all those things. Um, but in my own perspective, the reason why I did that um, early enough is because that it depends on what someone wants in life. So if your priority is to get a job, get a, uh, be stable first and all that, then that's fine. Um, it just depends. So for me, I don't like to put it in a box like and say mm -hmm. you should get married at this point, should get married at 30. It all depends on what you want in life and also as Pasi has said, it also depends on do you get the does the person you're getting married to understand? Do you have like the same vision? Is where right. you're going the same direction. Yeah. Okay. Jenny, do you trust our uh, the, the generation of Maureen to make sound decisions at below twenty five? <laughs> <laughs> Um, let, let me say this. Um, when I look at Maureen, I see a mature, young, beautiful girl. Right. And um, I, I think uh, I can trust her to make decisions. But the one thing that I am aware of, based on a lot of research that has been done about getting married that early, is that basically what happens is that as she continues to pursue, I mean, that's a 19-year-old getting into. By the time she's 25 or 27, ah, she's hot and ready for the next relationship because she goes through a cycle. Marriage is about a, um, a stage that goes from a dream stage, the romance, and then you get into drama. Usually, those young ones are not able to sustain drama very well. Okay. So they, they are usually very quickly and easily tempted to have an affair. I mean, I deal with this every single day. So what I would say is I can trust her because she is happy to be married. Um, Simon said something very important that he was ready. He was even in a career. He was a lawyer. Now, it depends on the readiness of the person. Okay. And he was so determined to find a partner and he found one at 23 you're growing and you're developing yourself if at that stage you are able to find a partner who you you bond with and are able to grow nothing can be as good as that right. because the reason we have so many children out of wedlock is because that is the height of your productivity years 
when you are young. Mm. And so you are not able to contain uh, your testosterone levels. I mean, you've got to do this thing, either with her or find. We have a lot of young people that have a lot of issues concerning pornography and masturbation, and they affect the relationships in the future. And so um, while I am aware that anyone getting married, a man, in my opinion, should not get married before the age of 25. Right. Be uh, and generally today, according to studies, uh, 27 um, really is the age that a lot of, in terms of average, that it is happening. I know that would interest you, so I'm going to come to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so Simon Bevy is just a 1%. Right. of those kind of people. A 23-year-old man is technically an 18-year-old. And, and so what generally happens is that I'm just, even as I say this, I'm reminded of a young man who got married at the age of 22. At 30, he said, Jenny, I need to find myself. I don't want this marriage. I don't know who I am anymore. Right. I, I, don't, I love my wife, but I, I'm suffocating in this relationship. So it depends on how they have been able to grow together and carry one another. Right. But the truth is, the chances of lack of trust for a younger woman are much higher because they are very explorative. Right. For a young man, they are kai because they too are in that level of a lot of um, hormone-driven bodies that it's difficult sometimes to trust. And all the issues... Uh, emanate from the foundation of trust in that relationship. All right. Simon, you, um, you do a lot with men. Um, 27, 25, mm -hmm. the age thing. Is a man ready um, at 25? Is he ready at 27? Well, that's a good question because um, it's interesting in the West, they get married generally early, many of them in college. Um, and, and for a long time, the West was still very stable in terms of families, mm. even though they got married early. I would say age is important, but also maturity is a, fact mm. of, uh, is a factor of being brought up. Uh, we have seen men who are 45 who are acting like 18. <laughs> they have not really grown up. And I was going to come there, because yeah. um, <laughs> do you think that in our generation, yeah. men mature as they used to before in terms of responsibilities, yeah. the ability to handle responsibility, family, finances, yeah. own up their decisions? Do you think that's the case for us? I think there's a way we were brought up that matured us a lot earlier. I, I mean, at, at 19, 20, I was taking care of my younger siblings and doing a lot of things that mature people today at 25 or 27 wouldn't do. Right. Uh, so the way we were brought up and just what we did. I think right now, because of technology and sitting down and watching things and a house help doing everything for you, uh, there are a lot of people in their late 20s who are still not mature. Uh, so I would say it's a way you train someone, okay. uh, the way people get to mature. If they have learned responsibility a lot earlier and they're able to do... I was talking to a 20-year-old uh, girl in America and from the conversation she was a lot mature than a lot of 30, 40 year olds that I talk about, uh, to here. But part of it is just the opportunities she was given when she was very young. At 18, she traveled to a, a, another country, stayed there eight weeks by herself, did a lot of things by herself, could budget and plan her money at that age. Uh, and we don't allow a lot of our children to do that. So it's more the way you're brought up. Um, Otherwise, um, I would say get married when the two of you uh, realize that you're mature enough to carry the responsibilities of adulthood. All right. uh, the age differences could be, uh, I mean, the age could be different. Some are uh, at 25, they are there. Others at 35, they are finally there. My big challenge with those who get married a lot later, especially in their 40s, and I know you've dealt with them as myself, many of them are so set in their ways that to accommodate another person, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, it's more of an alliance, they right? They've they needed. They could live without you, so they don't need you as much. <laughs> and sometimes it's an attitude. There are some there who are very mature to accommodate someone, but there are others who just find it a lot harder to be able to welcome a new person into their lives. And they may struggle a lot more as well. Yeah. I get a lot of uh, inbox messages, Maureen, mm -hmm. for younger people, especially wives or, or girlfriends, whatever. They live in with men, you know, uh, some of them not completely married. But what Jenny was bringing up, 
the drama is just amazing. There's so much drama and they always just want to jump out and they've got a lot of emotional issues, they want so much attention, there's a lot of trust issues, communication breakdown. How do you, do you handle that or how do you handle that? Uh, um, I think, you know, at time, you know, the, the, the TV is all over and there's social media and all those things. So I, I, I think, you know, our generation, we are mostly influenced by what we watch, by what we see. So for me, I feel that that has been a disadvantage, especially to relationships, because you see a certain marriage on TV, on social media, and that's what you want. And that's not the reality of things. So you see a woman who's been taken on holiday and you want the same thing, and your man is not able to provide the same thing. So I think we need to come down to the reality of things, and I believe for me a good foundation is what also matters a lot. So if you are given a good foundation, it kind of helps you um, deal with situations and all that. So a good support system, like for me, <clears throat> a good support system is what really helps me. Like yeah. if you have parents who are working with you, mm -hmm. and older people, really older people, not people of your own, uh, people who've gone through it, you know. Right. I think for me that is what really kept us. Because of course you're still, as, as she said, you're still going through the emotions mm -hmm. and you don't know what to expect in life, yeah? You, you're in love with this person and all those things. Um, so I think for me a good support, uh, a good support system and if you, whoever you're working with is old enough to help you and, and guide you. And, yeah, and just being real. And do we have that space um, in our day? Do we have that space of the older people mentoring, uh, families getting involved in the families of the younger people? Oh, uh, the social media day has just created chaos for us. People meet online. Uh, they're already living together. You only see photos. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'm reminded of the olden days where a child belonged not only to a family but to a community. Mm -hmm. Now today we are really in the urban where you are alone, really. And as you are alone, when you have not had strong foundations at parental level, where you consult your, your parents, you consult your aunties and your role models, uh, then it's very challenging. Whoever you consult now are, um, you know, the social media. <laughs> yeah. I, I can name them all <laughs> on social media. Uh, and so in terms of the, the moral values that, um, that, that you are able to, to mirror is not exactly what would be the moral values that were imparted in you. And so that becomes, it begins to deteriorate. And so you get the support from what is available. The auntie is not there. The mother is considered old fashioned and she doesn't understand modern dating and, you know, and what I'm going through. And so at the end of the day, that becomes a real challenge for me. I really uh, um, consider that sensing, censoring the, the level of engagement online uh, from childhood is a very important thing so that children and young adults may know where to go for support and how. And today now we also have a lot of professionals that they can go to, but nothing can take the place of parental support and a community support. And as I say that, I'm reminded that um, of a gentleman called Eric Erickson that has done the so psychosocial stages of development, mm -hmm. that every developmental stage has its challenges mm -hmm. that need to be addressed. And so when a young woman now is at the age of 18 to, um, you know, before she, she is 30, she's at that stage where it's now time to make intimate relationships and they begin to make their intimate relationships in seclusion meaning there's no one to to meet with and and tell them and so they meet strangers who they really don't know about and make decisions to be steady and to marry and they become dangerous to them because they were never exposed to an auntie a cousin somebody who cares and they don't have either all right. I met a lot of people that actually live together, not married. Mm -hmm. We have three children, we've been living together. Mm -hmm. They have never been to the matrimonial home of their partner. How? We met online, 
we loved one another and we still do but we don't have money to formalize yeah but i hear that sometimes because somebody will say they're having issues and they'll say i got pregnant uh, we met and in two months i was pregnant so the third month i moved in yes. and now he has changed yes do you think simon that um also uh, as, as Jen is talking about where we get our values from, you know, the young people, they're very impressionable. And so they see all these celebrities. Mm -hmm. So even things like divorce become nearly like fashionable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just being a single parent. Uh, in the older day, you'd hide. Mm -hmm. Today is a baby bump, you know. You come up with all kinds of photos and, <laughs> and all of that. Uh, That's interesting. Definitely values have been... Um, influenced by what we see. I mean, right. we watch some of the movies like Scandal and others, uh, and it's just easy for people to jump into bed and get out of bed. So there's no value of fighting for a relationship for a long time. Um, and sometimes I feel those of us who prepare our young people to get married, we really don't prepare them well. We don't talk to them about the stages of marriage and what they're going to go through. Do they have conflict resolution understanding and skills? Uh, the influence is a lot. That you know, relationship is more for sex, for the physical, than for companionship and enduring there and solving problems and maturing. Nothing grows you up like relationship. But if you're not ready to grow up, then you're going to be out, you know, in the ne uh, the next time you have a problem. Uh, I would say this to the parents first. Parents prepare your children so that by the time they leave your house, you know they have what it takes to sustain a yeah, relationship. Yeah, we're mostly prepared for yeah. the career. Yeah. We talk but a lot I about mean, careers, yeah. but you not need about a good life job, and, you know, and then it's worse for the men. At least the ladies, um, somewhere along the line, somebody will sneak in and yeah. say something like, you know, uh, you need to learn how to cook yeah. because you will be cooking for your husband. Yeah. But the men are not prepared to do that. Nobody's talking to the men about, you need to be a husband. You know, when they're teenagers, nobody talks about that. I know you're doing that, but generally, people don't prepare men to be husbands, right? We rarely do that, and even the ladies. So I think the responsibility is first on their parents. Right. My daughter is 16, and she just finished high school a little earlier. Uh, but I'm trying to prepare her as the, such that if she got to 18 and she wanted to get married, I would be confident. So recently, I sent her away out Would of the, the man have to have gone through money enough? For four months. <laughs> Definitely. That's my, uh, unless I can see these things in you, you don't touch my daughter. Uh, but I'm preparing my daughter as well. Just just okay. talking to her. I sent her out of the country for four months. She was on herself. She had her own budget. She's 16. But I am trying to give her what it takes for her to mature up. Don't so, try that at home. Yeah. Don't try that at home. Man. Yeah, just just send your daughter to the village. <laughs> there were support mechanisms. But yeah. The same with my son, who is 13 years old. Right. Uh, this year I'm taking him through rites of passage and part of it is teaching him how to relate with ladies, exposing him to certain things he's cooking, he's not going to graduate unless he can cook like 10 meals proper meals and do so getting ready, uh, responsibility is fast on us as parents but also uh, on those of us who bring these children to marriage pastors and relationship counselors, uh, there are people I've met who said I want to get married can you take me through counseling and look to them and say you're not ready for marriage not for two more years whatever your age i see issues in your life that if you get married right now will blow up the marriage okay. uh, so we have uh, as marriage counselors as pastors as leaders of uh, these religious institutions all of us we need to look at uh, these young people and say you're ready to get married or you're not and guide them uh, Boy, and not just say you're not listen? give guidance would you guys listen? I mean, <laughs> I mean, people people run away from home if they just think that the parents will not allow them to get married. They run away from home. Would your generation listen? I think they would listen. I think for us, we've gotten so much pressure from our parents, especially in terms of career, mm. because either as you as I mean, your mom or your dad felt like they didn't achieve whatever they wanted to mm. achieve in life, <laughs> so they want to live so through you, pushing you to achieve what they fail to achieve, you know, and they put so much pressure on you that now education has become, or I mean, being successful like in terms of business and things like that becomes the priority. And you build all these things only for them to come crumbling because emotionally or, you know, the foundations are not right. You see, so you could have all these things, but um, I mean, in terms of 
family, you don't know how, you don't have like a good support system. So for me, if we went back, if the family foundations are built well, no right. matter what else you build from there, because okay. you already have a good support system, then I believe things are going to, but they are going to, they can wait. And there are so times they won't listen. I mean, there, there's yeah. one, one <laughs> such young people, I told them, really it's not advisable to go into marry right now. Well, they went ahead, and within a year they had a divorce. Right. It wasn't a prediction. I mean, being an older person in relationships, yeah. you could tell these yes, signs. Yes, Guys, yes. deal with this and that and that. If you don't listen, I can only tell you. It's All right. Yeah. Just in, in winding up, uh, Jenny, and in about 30 seconds or something, the empowerment of the girl child, mm -hmm. did it affect how girls are now raised towards marriage because Maureen just mentioned you know now it's career mm -hmm. before there was a bit more emphasis yes. on her being a homely person yes. then suddenly it was like you're not just meant for the kitchen yes. you're not just meant for the home yes. find yourself a career and do everything True. did we swing to the other extreme without finding a balance I, I believe so because initially a woman's role was only one to be a natural and to be a homemaker. And so even as, as the stage of industrialization came, as, a, as the mothers became more aware that they are putting up with a lot because they are not economically empowered, they desired uh, to empower their daughters. And, and as, as a country and the world, we went on the move to empower the girl child, which is a very good thing. But as soon as a woman is empowered, she will not take nonsense because basically the man who is supposed to be the head of the house and provide the guidance and, and, and the direction for the family, um, once he abdicates his role, the woman quickly takes position and takes charge. Why? She's uh, socially and economically empowered. Right. In the past, they were not empowered, so they would have to wait, look for how to survive until the, the king comes home, and so today, the queen will do everything she needs to do for her children and for the community. And so the man loses his position and his power where the home is concerned. And now it's, we need to empower the boy child. And allow me to say that it's difficult to empower the young men without the father's influence or a male figure influencing men want to belong to a tribe what are others doing and they emulate that so it doesn't matter how hard i'm trying to teach my son he's looking at the other men around and saying i want to be like this one right. because that's what he admires and so do we need to empower our sons thank god for simon yeah Yes, yeah. that he has the forum, that the sons are being empowered, right. and that really needs to be. I will say to any single woman out there who is raising a son, don't raise a son on your own. A son requires a role model who is a man. If there is no father, find a male figure that your son can look up to so right. that they can just get their muscle and be the kind of man that you desire for them to be. All right. Yes. Well, that's all the time. Of course, we needed all the time because we're just getting started. But that's all the time that we've had for you today. From what I pick from the conversation, it's not so much about age. It's about how developed the people are, the support systems, how responsible they can be, how prepared they are. So you could actually even be 40 and still not prepared. Uh, you could be 25. As much as, you know, we, we know that the general trend would be, as Jenny has given us the statistics, but you could be 25, but you were thrown into life a bit earlier and you started making decisions and started making plans a bit earlier so the case about it is based on the individuals i hope you will be able to make better decisions concerning yourself please raise your families if you've got sons let them see simon um, and 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 any of the panelists you can always reach out to us life and style at sanamedia.co.ke our text message number all right my style story coming up next